Hello everybody and welcome to Paramecia, a One Piece fan cast where we review the latest chapter of One Piece and have a different One Piece related discussion every single week. My name is John. My name is Franz. And uh, today we're talking about chapter 888, good old triple eight lion, I think is what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, j- just lion. You know, like Snoop Dogg, Snoop Lion, <laughs> yeah. exactly the same thing. Yeah, I- I'm, I'm going to say it throughout the episode, but I- I- I'm a furry. I'm a furry now. <laughs> after this episode, after this chapter, I think I'm, I'm ready furry. to accept I'm a our pro lifer. I uh, <laughs> uh oh god, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> it started. Okay, when, um, is, when is our Zootopia One Piece crossover? <laughs> we can stop now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's gonna do it for us this week. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, it was a good chapter. Is a lot of the plot points are really condensed. Like, yeah, not a lot of stuff happened. The main stuff was the section at the end, and even then, it just that there was so much like action panels that that went by really fast. But um, just getting into the chapter, the cover story. I, I I'm not gonna lie. I thought the cover story was gonna be over with Edo last week's, and then I saw them but again, this, and I was like, what? Like, <laughs> such a good conclusion to it. Yeah, yeah. They they decided to finally like become a pirate crew, all four of them. So I'm like, hell yeah, yeah, because like, he he wasn't a pirate before. He just like joined up because it's like, well, shit, this was sick. Let's keep doing it. Yeah, and I I I feel like it's a really good ending to the whole. Uh, it's a good ending to the whole uh, long leg, long arm like confrontation we learned about in the story arc. Because it's like, oh, like they have this thousand year war, like this thousand year feud between each other between the tribes and then you look at blue gilly and edo and it's like well like who cares <laughs> like, yeah, I, fuck you yeah like that's 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 not our war like we're just chilling we're gonna be pirates and i, I thought that was pretty sick yeah good i i good way to end it i i hope the next chapter we see in like orlumbus or like somebody else true just because I, I would or even the tontadas i i would just like to see like i don't know it's really nice catching up with all of the uh all of the the straw hat grand fleet again because like yeah like we barely left them in dress rosa like it hasn't been that long but it's it's uh, i don't know anything about them yeah yeah like we all we knew was them from the coliseum and like the little story we got of them from dress rosa but it's cool to get like some like world building for them getting straight into the chapter cold open katakiri and luffy back at it in like fucking media rest and mind you i think brule is still on luffy's back it's not entirely clear but i don't know there's a panel where you can where luffy's like kneeling down and brule you like is it all that's on his back is the straw is the hat oh that's true there's a couple panels like that yeah uh, but i mean i don't know where she is I, i'm assuming she she has to be in the mirror world for him to be able to have gone in there but yeah exactly like and i don't think luffy would have let her go go yeah and i th- don't think really would have gone gone anyways yeah i really liked it it's just sort of a oda throwing us a bone like listen guys like look i know like i promised a hockey power up and it's coming but you know we got some other shit to take care of so but I like that he threw it in, because at least it was like, okay, like... Yeah, after mentioning it... After mentioning it and leaving a chapter off on it, I would have been kind of... Not disappointed, but it would have left, like, a sour taste if we came back to this, like, way later. Yeah, it would have been a little weird, like, as far as pacing goes. I would have just been like, w- well, yeah. where <laughs> is it, Oda? Yeah, but I, I really like this interaction. Um, I don't know, K- Katakuri's acting all cocky um luffy throws yeah yeah luffy throws a normal armament hockey punch and uh, i just i don't know man i i think it's like there's these little tells that oda gives us or like that i think are tells that like oh the fight's getting closer and closer because like okay any other time luffy punched with normal armament hockey like katakuri would use his observation hockey to create the holes in his body like he would never move to dodge something he would just stand there and in this panel he he doesn't do that and he he like bends backwards to dodge it 
And that kind of, I, I feel like that's sort of showing what Luffy was saying. Like, hockey gets used up no matter what. Like, you don't have to use Gear 4 every time. For, like, you know, normal people's hockey can get used up if they're pushed to the limit. And I feel like that's kind of a tell of what's happening just with that. Because, you know, every other time we saw him, like, dodge Luffy's punch, he, he literally would just, like, form his body with Mochi. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, after that, it basically just jumps into a little bit of a slapstick routine in which like they're being fired at by the whole like the whole fleet and everything and it's like oh my god they're gonna be sunk by like soul imbued cannonballs yeah so the the, the homie <laughs> cannonballs and, they... and nami pulls through and is just like no they went that away like are you kidding me is this a Hanna barbera cartoon nami hits them with the oldest trick in the book and i i was cracking up when i read it like <laughs> Like, come on, they're they're over there. (laughs) After that, we're introduced to um, Charlotte Bavaro. I don't don't know. It's a Bavarian cream. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that, I I looked it up. That's that's all I know. He's wearing a snapback. And uh, is he, like, a fucking, like, white LMFAO, like, person? (laughs) Yeah, I'm looking. He's wearing a snapback and those fucking glasses, like, (laughs) like, the party rocker glasses. And he has like a braided beard, like, dude, the the the, the clout got to him. <laughs> uh, Oda, been... are you okay? <laughs> Oda's been infected by the clout. <laughs> After that introduction, we're as a viewer blindsided, at the same time as the Straw Hats are blindsided because they're being pincered by Daifuku and by Smoothie. Yeah, <laughs> and. <laughs> Daifuku mentions like, "Hey guys, don't 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 use those fucking face cannonballs. Use real cannonballs. Yeah. We got this." Daifuku's the smart one because uh, when it shows Big Mom and Perospero, which I want to get into something with that, but um, yeah, when it shows Perospero talking to them, there's a part where they talk about Big Mom's like, like her power starting to like not fade, but um. Ah, here it is. It's before. Uh, if Mama's not in her right mind, she can't control her souls. It was when they when they revealed Bava Bavara, but um, yeah, when they show Perospero and Big Mom, he he's kind of telling them like, you know, like sink the straw hats, and then that's when Daifuku's like, all right, like don't use the ones with faces on them. Like whatever you do, we don't have time for that. But yeah, it shows Big Mom and Perospero has, again, classic like Oda foreshadowing that I. It's just an interesting concept, and I don't know because we don't how know how it'll be like put into play. Yeah, yeah. So Perospero, he has like a throwaway line, like he has one tiny box on the left hand side, and it's like, "Is it just me, or have you slimmed down a bit, Mama?" And he does his laugh like Bedouin, but like it shows Big Mom, and you can tell like she is, she is slimmer than every other time we've seen her. Like her arms are slimmer. And her fingers are kind of her hands. She has this, like, breath thing, like, coming out. Like, maybe she's exhausted or something. Like, Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very strange thing. I know Oda's going to implement it in, like, a way that works. Yeah. It's just, it's just weird. Not weird. I guess it's just kind of off-putting because ever since we've known Big Mom and, like, we got the flashback of her on um, Elbaf, we saw her go into, like, a feeding frenzy rage. But they kind of cut away from every time she's done that in, like, flashbacks. And we haven't really seen, mm-hmm. you know, the f- we haven't seen the full, like, what happens after. We haven't seen the aftermath of when she goes on one of those. Like, we kind of did, but we didn't see, like, a real... Um, like, play-by-play, like, what transpires. Yeah, yeah. We haven't seen what goes on during it. And I think this might be a thing that, like, happens during her feeding frenzy that, like, we just haven't been acquainted with yet. Um, but I think it's really interesting. I, Oda's going to use it. I, I feel like Oda's going to tie it in with the very end of the chapter. Like this is going to lead to some, if this isn't big mom's like weakness, it's going to lead to some kind of moment of weakness for big mom. And that's when they're going to make their grand escape. I mean, it very well could be that like, if this really is such a large sign of weakness, they might be able to kill her. But uh, yeah, that too. I mean, they. Uh, I, I I know Luffy it's a big said. Butt, man. Yeah, I know Luffy said that he, like the first one on his shit list is Kaido. Like Big Mom, he yeah. he said he'd come after her after Kaido, 
But I mean, yeah, it's just speculation on this week. Like, if this is, like, a weakness and it weakens her enough, then, like... Strike while the iron's hot, Yeah, man. they might be able to, you know, actually put up a fight with her. <laughs> well, Brooke already put up a fight with her, but that's... <laughs> but he's Brooke, Brooke, best straw hat, anyways, yeah, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it just, it's... They get pincered. We as the audience, we're reading it. We're like, oh, like, they're fucked because, like... You know, because they're fucked. <laughs> they're they're one ship. Sanji is not even. Sanji and the fire tanks aren't even near them yet. And even if they did get there, they would just see. They would come up on the Thousand Sunny and just see it surrounded by like a fleet of big mob pirates. Yeah, they would be like outnumbered like tenfold at the very least. Yeah. So yeah, they're kind of the the Straw Hats are ready to fight though. I I did respect that because like. Brooke was ready, and <laughs> Chopper's sitting there like, <laughs> Chopper, come at me, come at me, I let me at him. Yeah, Chopper was like, hold me back. <laughs> and then, and then uh, that's ooh, that's yeah. when we all turn. That's 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 when I joined uh, Sonic Fox's army and became a furry. Because <laughs> 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 we, proper everybody, I promise I'll be useful, and it's like what like when i read this i was like uh oh like i knew that's when we were gonna get the moon thing but i just i did not know what the moon thing was going to entail and it was so awesome (laughs) it the whole process of it is so so good because like dude even fucking even jimbe's like no you don't mean are are yeah, you for Jim- real? Yeah. J- <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, Jimbei knew, like, what the technique was called. And he was, like, startled that she knew it, as all of us were, I guess. But, like, it makes sense. I-, I don't know. I-, we- I-, I feel like I shouldn't have been as-, as startled as I was. Because it makes sense. Like, we got confirmation a while ago that she, like, Pedro was training her. Like, she is, yeah. like, an up-and-coming musketeer. But it's it, man, it's just wild when she took off the hat and like the transformation sequence. Dude, man. I thought her tail like just straight like blew up, like it, it just like exploded and came off. But like, no, that's that's not what happened. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. I, I was getting like Sailor Moon vibes, but like, I, okay, Sailor Moon vibes after the transformation, during the transformation. I, she, it looks that like was she's some like bleach shit. Like, yeah, 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 she's going like monster point <laughs> hollow. Like. Dude, that's exactly it. That's exactly what's fucking going on. Oda had Titty Kubo come in for the <laughs> for, for the, the assist. fucking cameo. Yeah, dude, it was wild. Yeah, I. It was they, they reveal her power. Um, Su Su Long Su Long was the, tra- was the translation. That I think both of us read too long. Yeah, yeah, which means um, moon lion. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> he, yeah, dude, it's fucking, it's some shit. And like the final reveal of her form is like, like you said, like Sailor Moon, like fucking Utena kind of like vibe. Like, yeah, yeah, a high bishojo kind of thing. And literally, my first thought in this panel was. There are already so many people that probably want to fuck carrot, and this and isn't then helping. this happens, like and now I come on fuck guys, no. <laughs> exactly. Zootopia was like what two years ago, like oh this is an goodness. advent of some sort. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our furry podcast where we <laughs> talk about furries taking over the world and how we are completely helpless to their thrall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's man. I, I don't know. I I liked the, I like the callback to, Inu Arashi, because oh, yes, it shows like, Brook remembering what Inu Inu Arashi said on the island after the after the Jack fight. He was saying, um, next time we've got an ace up our sleeves. Next time we fight the Mink Tribe, we'll show the world its true form. And it's like, man, like that's it. The oh, panel where that bubble is over is fucking ridiculously good because it's just like, like the way it's shown, like it's literally oh, yeah, just her. K 
carrot versus the entire fucking fleet but the way it's juxtaposed is like she's larger than the entire fleet yeah and like looming over them clearly yeah, showing yeah. she will fuck them yeah like this is not some kind of jobber power up like this is real <laughs> even this like jesus burgess looking motherfucker <laughs> on um daifuku's ship is like freaking out yeah and man she just goes nuts she jumps off the ship and chopper's like oh she's gonna fall in the water and then she could <laughs> i i'm assuming with her electro or some kind of like meat tribe geppo like she just flying through the air <laughs> like i think it's definitely electro but that does not detract from the fact that carrot's a super saiyan yeah yeah, carrot, yeah basically. Carrot, this is literally carrot blanco <laughs> i think i peaked like crazy on the recording like <laughs> carrot blanco <laughs> that's our crack theory for the day goodbye <laughs> oh my god <laughs> el hermana <laughs> god dude this is fucking (laughs) (laughs) all jokes aside it's super hype but fuck (laughs) yeah no it's god i i don't know it's i'm assuming she's you like so she has like electricity all over her body so like i'm assuming the electro is just like everywhere around her body but then like she's able to fly so like i'm just assuming it's like some kind of like geppo mixed with like just using the electro to like for speed or something i don't know regardless she's like super fast and she could like she's blitzing these guys like she uses an after image when they shoot at her and she uses an after image and just lands on the side of the ship and just fucking murders them like jesus she bites somebody she like keeps doing these acrobatics and everything she like she drop kicks a dude yeah (laughs) and like it's this entire fucking fleet. She's on Daifuku's ship too. Not even this other jobber that like the twenty six son Bavarios or whatever, the Basarios. The Basarios, yeah. It's Daifuku. Daifuku's the third son. Like that carries such an influence in their power dynamic as a family, and yeah. she's just sitting here destroying them. That and like we've been introduced to Daifuku's fruit power before, like. He can, like, he summons the genie, but he can Im- imbue armament hockey, like, over the entirety of the genie's body. Like, the genie has, like, Virgo levels of whole body armament hockey. So oh, it's like, yeah. he, he's not a, he's not a joke. He's, he, like, he's, you know, he, he is one of Big Mom's top fighters, even though he's not a commander. But dude, she, she tore through his entire ship like it was nothing. Like, like they're all dead. <laughs> And I, my reaction was the same as Chopper's. Like, uh, what? <laughs> like, and Daifuku sitting here and it's like, a little girl, would you, are you going to fight a whole fleet of soldiers? Blah, 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 blah. Like, barking at her. And she just steals the fucking wheel of the ship. Yeah. yeah she, <sighs> she steals the wheel of the ship and breaks the ship's helm. And then she just fucking, like, smiles. Like, hmm. <laughs> And that's the point. In which we fully converted. Welcome yeah. to our furry podcast where we endorse furries. Yeah, welcome to Furry Mesia. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. God, it was It was a fun chapter. It was it, sure. it was a really fun chapter. I, I am I'll 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 own up to it and I'll go on record. I, I have been on record. I've been sleeping on Carrot only because we haven't really seen her do anything, so Yeah, like, exactly. I figured when Perospero was like taunting her about Pedro's death, I assumed we would get some sort of fight from her where she would like remember Pedro. I, you, you could have told me that she would have turned into El Hermana and I would like and Carrot Blanco and I would have been like, yeah, yeah, shut up, like that's, shut up. I, I'll, I'll hold that L. Like she, she surprised me in this chapter and I'm really happy that she's like super powerful. Yeah, no, she's actually, like, a fucking competent character. Yeah. And this leads me to the discussion that I want to bring up. Yeah, go for it. Is she going to be a mainstay of the Straw Hat Pirate crew? Oh, yeah, that's... 
again, I mean, I'll, I'll I'm not, I'm gonna hold this L. I'm not gonna lie to anybody. I before, I think on this podcast, have stated that I didn't think she would be on the Straw Hats. That is like completely tossed into the air now with this yeah. chapter because she's hella competent. She can like fly. She's she's carrot fucking blanco, dude. She's fucking viable as all shit. Like yeah, like, my... she has an install super that takes her from a C tier to an S tier. Like what <laughs> yeah. is that? Yeah, her meter gain sucks, so it puts her overall in the B tier, but... <laughs> she, The way I see this is, like, it's dragon install, but so far, no drawbacks. Like, there's no, like, you know, a thousand frame recovery. <laughs> like... <laughs> Dude, like, I, I don't know, like, I still feel like Pudding will be, like, the quote-unquote tenth member, but as for, if we're talking strictly yeah. on, like viability in the crew i feel like at this point like carrot has shown that like she definitely deserves a spot on the crew like either like not like uh provisionally or anything but like in a sense that like you know if she so wanted to like she could just sail with them and shit yeah but i feel like she's probably gonna like go back to zo train a bit more etc cetera, etc cetera. or like, not go back to zo but like you know she's gonna go with them to wano and everything and after that yeah. go back to zo and do yeah. all that shit because you know like i can agree with that uh i feel like she's she's definitely gonna stick with the straw hats throughout zo like i i feel like that's for certain throughout wano or throughout wano my bad sorry um yeah as soon as they get to wano like she's going to be with them i i'm confident in saying the entirety of wano she's going to be like with the straw hats yeah um, it makes sense especially like the mink tribe has like such a yeah close tie to wano yeah i would looking at it now i would like her to join i feel like it'd be cool if she joined the straw hats now i still want pudding to join because like i like yeah. i still i still like pudding i'm on that pudding hype train but the the only like thing for me is if this power up so this is like a well known power up but they made it clear that it was like a full like you could like is is it only during a full moon i it seems to be it which kind of fucking sucks yeah cuz cuz then it's like all right like carrot yeah she is strong like she you know she's she's able to She's able to speed blitz people even in her base form. Like, she was able yeah, to like, dodge Zoro's blade and then, like, block his sword. Like, she was able to surprise Zoro. And, you know, people can argue, like, oh, well, Zoro wasn't really, like, trying to fight her. But it's like, she's still able to dodge him. Yeah, like, um, if she were just a fucking schmuck, she would have <clears throat> died. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, if, if this power up is, like, something that she can control, like, at will, then that'd be sick. But, um, I just don't know. I just don't know if that's going to be the case. And I mean, I, again, we'll have to wait till next chapter because we, we yeah. really, all we know, all we, like, all we know about this power up is that it's hype as fuck. We don't know any drawbacks or like what it actually does. Like, all we know is that we're high yeah. on this excitement and we're also furries now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't, I cannot state enough, like that we're furries now like i am a furry now <laughs> like there's i think there's no doubt about it now like furry con 2018 here i come uh, <laughs> watch out for our panel <laughs> yeah yeah watch out uh, for our panel at furry con 2018 so i i want to keep going with this and bring it into a like a discussion about like positions that they would ostensibly take like pudding versus carrot in this like what position would they have in the whole crew in that like oh, chop yeah. is the helmsman and jimbe just being added is also like a fucking helms like if not a better helmsman chopper's a doctor yeah like, what am i saying now jimbe's the fucking helmsman because he, he knows the waves and everything yeah he is so, the ship <laughs> exactly so what could Pudding or what could pudding, pudding versus carrot, or what carrot could they bring be? to the table? Yeah. Um. 
I think for pudding, it would be sous chef. Like, See, I thought that, but I feel that's too easy. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, but at the same time, like, that, like she is she, yeah, a really she good is. chef. Yeah, she is. And, like, she's going to be with Sanji. She's always going to be cooking with him. Like, that's no doubt yeah. about it. But she has a certain set of skills. <laughs> she has a particular set of skills. <laughs> And considering those set of skills, <laughs> she could, and I, I mean She's the this cruise somewhat, no, that I mean this very seriously. She could play the part of saboteur, spy, assassin, etc., etc., etc. Shit, yeah, like, she could very easily. Her fruit power, like, really helps with that. She's been doing that her entire fucking life basically in yeah. possibly the most volatile setting in the one piece universe yeah for sure and as far as like carrot i don't know like i, I don't want to like put her down or anything and be like oh she's the mascot but like <laughs> as far as like practical like ship skills i don't i don't think she knows any because you know she's been on a giant fucking elephant the entire her entire life. Yeah, this is the first time that she's ever been off of Zo. But um, yeah, I I would say for for pudding my my answer to that like what would she be? Uh, I I'm really leaning towards like sous chef because like it, it I I do like the saboteur idea though, but I just feel like it'd be like if the arc ends and somehow pudding is allowed to like leave like follow in Lola's footsteps and like leave and she does go Ooh. with the straw hats um i feel oh, like that's she would some foreshadowing yeah oh, i feel, feel like good. she she would be like she would want to leave with Sanji if she does leave um yeah yeah without a doubt yeah i i re- whether she leaves or not again is like we'll have to see how the arc plays out cuz i have no idea um but in terms of carrot um the thing that the first thing that comes to mind is i have two ideas and they're kind of similar like she'd be lookout because she's always on the the she's always on the perch at the top um or after this like with her with all of her speed feats and stuff i'm thinking like scout yeah because she's a like even before carrot blanco um she was able (laughs) (laughs) she was able to like again she's really fast like she she's been trained by the musketeers like she's no jobber as i as i once thought yeah, and like when the crew first got to Zo, they were like they were scouting on them and shit. Like, yeah, yeah, they kept themselves concealed, like all of the minks did, to like a certain point. And like, you're you're very right. Like, scout or like just all around lookout really does fit her. Yeah, I feel I feel like if if she if Carrot was to join, that would probably be like her official title, like scout or or lookout of some sort because i mean she's she's been on the the freaking perch on top of like the i forget what it's called on the ship like a bird's uh, nest or whatever something. sure perch. i don't know she's, yeah. she's been on the whatever the the highest the point of the ship the perch like constantly um like she's every time we've seen her and the sunny like together she's always on there like with binoculars even in this chapter, when she's like, "Oh, like let me do it, like I'll be useful," she said that from atop of the the perch, like she was on top of the lookout. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, her her speed, uh, her speed feats this chapter and other chapters, like she is, she is crazy fast. <laughs> like, yeah, especially because like, so we've seen Sanji fucking like basically fucking instant transmission before. And she's sitting here doing the same, like, you yeah, know, I would, yeah. I, I would go as far as saying that, you know, Sanji's speed is probably the highest on the Straw Hat crew. Yeah, yeah, for sure. L- Luffy does, like, you know, move around a lot and, like, he gets places, but, like, he hasn't, like, shown the same kind of, like, expertise in speed as, like, Sanji has in the last several chapters. Yeah, no, definitely. So I mean, Sanji in the last, like, I think the last chapter where he, eight eighty six when he kicked Oven, like he, <laughs> Oven didn't know what the hell hit him. <laughs> like he, he literally was like, 
what the hell was that? Like, <laughs> like who who hit me and it wasn't Pound? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's God, she's crazy. I, I, this kind of leads me into. Um, I kind of wanted to ask. I guess another leading the discussion into another question. Um, if this like the, if she's able to do this, like, dude, how strong are the minks? Like, we know Inarashi and Nekomamushi can can most definitely do this. Like, it's very hinted at at this chapter and even before. And I mean, those two were no joke. They were able to, like, take on Jack before they got, like, captured. But they were able to go head-to-head with him, like, in fights. And even, like, man, I, I don't know. It's 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 crazy to think that, like, a lot of the most powerful minks could have this power-up. And it's like, what the hell would it look like for them? And then, uh, I, I guess not a question, but just, I'm just kind of rambling. Like, dude, it's, like, if the other minks have this, this is nuts. Um... Yeah, no, like, it really puts a lot into perspective of, like, it's a good thing that they're on our side. Yeah. Because, holy shit, man. <laughs> like, the the only thing that I feel, like, sucks is that if we think about this, like, grand scheme of things kind of thing. So, this is the full moon. Yeah. And they're going to be going to Wano after this. Let's say in in lore time the rest of the arc takes like three not like two three days or something yeah because like they, they finish this day and then they rest or some shit like somewhere out on the fringe of the fucking territory yeah and then they leave but so that's three days and then they go to wano which takes like who knows how fucking long i don't think it'll take another fucking like 25 days yeah (laughs) so that there's another fucking full moon and like like we said that that limitation kind of sucks unless unless there's some fucking stupid ass duces machina kind of shit in which like someone can either like fake or like create a full moon like like Vegeta, I was I was thinking like that. fucking Vegeta exactly like like if they can somehow emulate the the full moon like in some way that would be super helpful to the to this like power up. Granted, like if we put things in perspective, Carrot is just a like up and coming like she's a squire basically. <laughs> she was learning the fucking ropes from Pedro. And Pedro yeah. wasn't even, like, the top of the chain of command. There's fucking Inoshishi, Inoshishi and Neko, Neko, whatever the fuck. Yeah, Neko Mamushi. Yeah. And if anyone would have some sort of ability like that, it would definitely be them. Yeah. Because that, that would just be so fucking strong. Yeah. And, uh, there's, been a, there's been a couple things that I've thought about this chapter. Or well, after this chapter and after the the revelation of the moon, and just I the whole arc, I guess as a whole, like thinking back to some stuff. Um, just to wrap it up, I'll, I kind of want to go into it a bit with you. Um, so there's I forget where I found it. So the other day there was a there was like a discussion. Um, it was on Rogers Base had like a big One Piece like stream with all these people, but I guess somebody in the chat like said something that i guess in certain not religions but in certain like cultures i guess jaguars are like connected to the moon and they can like pass like like jaguars are known for like crossing the boundary of life and death like they can like they can cross they can cross over like freely Hmm. and with this whole moon thing it just got me thinking like is there a possibility that like I, well, at first I thought, is there a possibility that Pedro, like, somehow comes back in some way? Mm. I, I, I would be cool with it if it wasn't, like, him, if that makes any sense. Like, I, I liked it in this because this chapter made it seem like, like, yeah, Pedro did come back in the form of the, the training and his, his will that he imprinted onto, onto a carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Like his training that he gave to Carrot was like 
left an imprint on her and she was able like pedro is still alive through carrot like basically um but i also also um i don't know that that was just an interesting thought i thought but then that got me thinking outside of that stream that got me thinking do you remember when we first got to when we first left zoe going to whole cake island there was a line i forget who said it somebody said it they were talking to pedro and they said oh pedro like you should go and watch over peckham's you're the only one who can control his like urges I remember that being a very, very strange line. I was like, what the hell? Like, Yeah, it was very out there. Yeah, I know they go back, you know, like they're, they're really, uh, you know, they have history. Like they go back, they're minks, they grew up together, like, you know, they have history. But I thought it was really weird until this chapter <laughs> when the full moon, when it shows like specifically Jimbei, he says, uh, Su Long, don't tell me you've trained for it. And that got me thinking, like, uh, this is, like, this is, like, my th- my theory for it. I think that maybe Pedro's able to do this, but he's not able to control it. Oh. I feel like that might be, like, a... That might come up. That's that's what I'm try- trying to get at, I guess. I feel like that might come up at a certain point. Like, that's going to give them some kind of opening. Because while all, like, while all this chaos is going on... Now the big mom pirates have to deal with Pedro, who's like can't control his Su Long or like form, and he's just rampaging. Yeah, that would be like a very interesting way to like bring him back. Um, the only the only thing I can think of, which would require research and a lot of keyboard clacking in front of the microphone, yeah, is um if jaguars are in any way related to like I guess chinese mythos specifically because if you consider so wano is supposed to be quote-unquote japan and everything and as allies of japan not allies so to speak but like as like people that like helped quote-unquote japan um zo has been there and on top of that su long if i'm not mistaken or ignorant is Chinese for moon lion. And so yeah. if there's any kind of like Chinese specific mythos about like jaguars and moons, I feel like there's definitely like traction to any theory like that because you know how Oda is and he just yeah, likes yeah. to give like IRL justification for a lot of things. Yeah, no, he 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 definitely likes using like other cultures like influence on stuff. You know, the, the, like, the entirety of Skypiea was so cool. Because it was, like, this weird floating, like, Mayan culture mixed with, like, the sort of, like, like oh, monk. Yeah. Like, this, like, they were monks. And it was really cool. Um, Yeah, I don't know. It, th- this chapter really just got me thinking about all that kind of stuff. Like, I I, I don't think, Pe- I think Pedro's done. Like, Pedro is fucking blasted. He's dead. But I, I feel like his will kind of lives on in, like, Carrot. Yeah. I can definitely see that. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I want to think that maybe that line was meant to kind of foreshadow Pedro, like, or not Pedro, um, Peckham's like kind of going insane or like maybe he can't control it or something, but I don't know. I, I, I thought this chapter, like <laughs> the revelation of the moon for the minks really got me thinking about a lot of stuff. It was, it was super, super cool. So update. I very quietly typed onto Google Translate, <laughs> like some stuff coming. I I don't know if Su Long is Chinese at all. Yeah, I thought it. Uh, well, what's I thought it might have been Japanese. What's because I isn't Su like for the moon? Yeah, but there's no way that like oh, like Long wrong. is not yeah, even yeah. a thing in japanese yeah. and like it, it might be korean maybe like which would hold on hold on yeah. we're, we're doing this we're doing this we're doing it live um which would make some degree of sense because there were certain eras in which like koreans were definitely far more allied with japan and like 
when it came to like Japan's like closed period, they were like one of the more accepted people to actually come into Japan. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, like... I, I'm, I'm fucking no. Never mind. Yeah, I, I, I'm editing this out. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just it, this this moon power up kind of brings a whole bunch of different like thoughts and theories to the table that I think are really cool. It, it brings a lot of implications with it that uh, you know, I don't know how they're gonna pan out as the series progresses, but I think it's really cool. Um, again, I really like the idea that you brought up of like them sort of artificially creating whatever for not like the full moon like if, if they if they can pull a vegeta and like artificially create the moon the full moon and like have somewhat control of this power i think that would be super sick going forward because i feel like that's that's sort of uh i don't know it's it's a really it's a really important tool to the minks and like you know if they're yeah, actually yeah. gonna be like be contenders in this like world theater they they can't like be doing this once a month because at that point like you know people are gonna yeah, know like yeah. oh you know we'll just, just attack, attack them whenever it's not a full moon yeah yeah i feel like this is like i don't know new world is no joke so the fact that they've lived in new world like you know for as long as they have on zo i feel like you know th- this power up can't just be a once a month thing or whatever i really hope that next chapter we kind of get more um information on this power up like maybe in a flashback from pedro or wanda i feel like that's really most likely like i feel like we might get a flashback from carrot's point of view about when she was training for this power up that'd be really cool and it's definitely yeah. something that odo would definitely touch upon or something like that yeah because i feel like we really need it at this point um we know so little about this power up that it's like and it's so cool that it's like dude like I don't know. I feel like everybody reading this chapter like wants to keep going and be like, all right, like you know, what's what does this power up entail? Like it's out. It's really cool. I need it. That's all yeah, I need. I, I need, need it. it. <laughs> all right, folks. That's gonna do it for us this week. We're not on break next week, thank God. So we're gonna be back next week with chapter eight hundred and eighty nine. Um, here's our crack theory of the week. I want to preface this with the fact that this came to me. In a cold sweat in the middle of a night, I was touched by some o- some otherworldly some being. Horror? Yeah, for fucking real. So, <clears throat> here I go, and I hope my neighbors don't hear me. So, smoothie can juice people. And so, effectively, this juice can be made into vape juice. And oven can heat stuff up. So, effectively, oven can superheat and vaporize those juices. We need combination juices like this. We need more vape powers. They can make a vape power. (laughs) The vape vape fruit. I like it. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Have a great week, everybody. Uh, Vape nation, y'all. I want to die.